Science Weekly, an industry pundit podcast about the tech and innovation of the 21st century. An open discussion between industry experts to uncover how emerging technologies can help solve current societal issues. Hi again um, from Hi. Brussels. Uh, thank you for joining us and having us here also, also in Brussels. Today we have Annika ostergren Povantis with us uh, from the EU Commission. Can you please tell us a bit about what you do for the EU Code Week? And yeah, so I work for the European Commission uh, and I coordinate the EU Code Week initiative on behalf of the, of the Commission. And I also work with other digital skills policies. Great. Uh, can you please tell us a bit about the EU Code Week? I'm sure many people know it, we're familiar, but a bit more details about the program. So EU Code Week is a grassroots initiative, so it's actually run by volunteers in many, many countries, not only in Europe and the Western Balkans and in candidate countries, but really 80 countries around the world. And in, each of, in many of these countries we have Code Week ambassadors, and they try and you know, spread the word of Code Week, help people organize events, etc. And then we have leading teachers, we call them, uh, and their role is to spread the word really among teachers and help other teachers. But all the activities that are organized are organized by people who like coding or digital skills or robotics or 3D printing. We are not so focused on just coding, it's, it's a little bit wider than, than that. So last year, for example, we had uh, 78,000 activities wow. organized around in 80 countries with about 4.2 million uh, participants, where wow. around half were girls. So. Wow, that's, that's huge. And it's that's huge. amazing, it's yes. great impact. And what are the age groups like normally? The average age of the participant is like 11, 12 years old, but, but Code Week as such, we, we from the commission, we focus, we give resources to reach schools. Mm -hmm. uh, but Code Week as such is open to any age group. You can also involve your grandma or grandpa or unemployed people. It's up to you as, a, as an organizer of an activity. Mm -hmm. And why is coding so important for the Commission? It's I think digital skills in general mm -hmm. are very important, but we want children to understand what happens behind the screen of your phone or the computer or how this podcast uh, is run by uh, you know different algorithms. So, so that and get more people, and especially kids, to understand that you can create with code. Mm -hmm. You can create apps, you can play, you play games, but you can also create games. You know, so we get a little bit away from that you're just consuming digital, that you actually can, can, can have the power to do something yourself. I, I fully agree. There's this always, there was this misconception, they said that the millennials or the new generations are digitally literate, but they only knew how to consume it. Not yes. to create it, yeah. and it's it's a huge issue. And yeah, the digital natives—they <laughs> are really good users, but but they they don't really know what's going on. And of course, older people don't know either. But we're kind of targeting the younger generation because they will really live in an even more digital world than than we do. Wow, and you've been working on this for a very long time. How do you see it evolving? So it was uh, launched in 2013, so 10 years ago. We're actually celebrating our 10th anniversary uh, this year. Um, it was launched by some volunteers who, uh, or young people who worked um, as volunteers for the commissioner for the Europe European Commission, because they thought that people in general needed to learn what I just said about coding and digital skills and what goes on behind the computer. Uh, so they launched Code Week initiative and for a couple of years the Commission supported it with communication etc. But about five years ago we decided to um, be, get a little bit more serious. So since then we have developed together uh, with some organizations, um, for example training for teachers, uh, massive open online courses, you know the mm -hmm. MOOCs. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have lots of resources uh, on the website. We try to become a hub mm -hmm. so that if you want to learn code or if you want to teach code, you can go to the Code Week website and find what you need. Our website is also translated to 29 languages. Oh. It's also Greek, uh, all the European uh, languages and some extra ones. Um, yeah. um, so the, the EU Code Week, the dates, is it always the same or it changes every year? 
So it around the same time every year. This year it's between the 8th and 23rd of October. That's when we celebrate because we like to say that every week is cold week and then we celebrate in October. Great. And is there anything coming up for the 10th anniversary? Any big plans for this year or...? No, we try and uh, just continue with the okay. normal stuff. We, we would really like to have more activities, of course. So if any listener is listening to this, uh, we really would invite you to, to put your activity on the Code Week map. Uh, and the website is codeweek.eu. So um, let's say I want to organize a Code Week. How can I do it? What do I need to do? So you need to have a place, maybe. Uh, you need to get some uh, people, kids, uh, and if you don't know how to code yourself, it would be probably be a good idea to get someone who can help you teach mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, or guide the kids. There are always kids uh, available who want to learn. Um, and then the old, only thing you need to do really is to put it on the map, on the mm -hmm. Code Week map, which is codeweek.eu, and you have a add activity, and then you are, you, then you have done the Code Week activity. Oh, that's. And um, at the end, you report that there were so many participants, uh, etc. And uh, that sounds easy. Even though I don't know coding, I'm sure <laughs> I can find somebody who knows. Um, yeah. And the agenda and everything is provided by you, or it's free to the organizers to create however they want. It's completely free to for you to organize your mm -hmm. activity. Uh, however you will like it. And as I said, it's not only about coding. You can, you can explore robotics or AI or, uh, or uh, 3D printing um, or blockchain, um, as you wish. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you would like to add? It's a lot of fun. It's a fantastic <laughs> community to, to work with and uh, you should really join. Well, thank you. Thank you. It was great having you. Thank you. Thanks. This podcast is brought to you by Science, former RISE, the research center of excellence in Cyprus, focusing on interactive media, smart systems, and emerging technologies. For more information, please check our website on science.org.cy.